if when, you, when you treat people good, it'll always come back to you. And a friend of mine who I came up in, t in the music business with, uh, both of us started at a very young age. He was 16 when he started. He was this child prodigy that produced for Celine Dion, Barbara Streisand, Whitney Houston, Destiny's Child. And um, he and I had always been friends. We had never done business together. But when he was in town, you know, I would always host him. Or when I was in his town, he would always host me. And, um, and he knew I was going through a little bit of trouble, didn't want to say anything. But he called me up and he said, Troy, I, um, I got this uh, girl that I found on MySpace. Um, I'm going to bring her to LA tomorrow. And you should check her out. I want to bring her by the office. So the way our office was set up, it was this glass office. And um, you can see out to the reception area. And Vince is this guy that's, you know, Vince is probably about 400 pounds. And um, so he's at the reception area. So he's walking back. And then all of a sudden, you see this skinny girl with uh, fishnet stockings, no pants on, and these big black sunglasses walk from around him. And, um, and she came into the room to play music, and, um, and she introduced herself as, as Lady Gaga. And listened to the music, something special here. Looked at her, that thing in her, in, in, in her eyes, and what she told me is she had just gotten dropped from a record label about four months ago, where she had, she had this dream of becoming this superstar, um, gave everything up to, to, to chase this dream. And, um, and her dad gave her, she dropped out of NYU, and her dad gave her one year. He said, uh, if, if you, if you want to do this, you're going to have one year to figure this out. And so he allowed her to leave school to be able to chase her dream. And she, here she was. She had achieved the dream, and all of a sudden she had gotten dropped from her, def, her, rec, her record label at Def Jam. And um, she spent three months on her grandmother's couch in West Virginia, kind of licking her wounds. And her grandmother kicked her off the couch. Said, Go, get, get out of here. Basically, the same thing my grandmother told me was the same thing her grandmother told her. And she, she had to get back on the horse. And um, so here she was in my office playing this music for me. And I told Vince, I said, Vince, you got to bring this girl back. It's, it's, it's something there. So we ended up starting to work together. And it was one of those things where we, we had nothing to lose. And this was a, a saying that one of my mentors told me. Is failure a headwind or a tailwind? And that stuck with me for so long. Because sometimes you can get bogged down and, and you can let you know life circumstances beat you up it can it, you know it can, it, and nothing wakes you up like cold concrete so are you going to lay there or, or are you going to get back up and um and this was one of those moments so where she had nothing to lose i had nothing to lose Vince had nothing to lose, and we all decided to, that we were going to take the world by storm. We had the best music, and we were going to and we were going to build the biggest superstar in the world. Only it didn't happen. We released the first song, and it was a dud. It was a failure. We went to every radio station in the country. No radio stations would play it. They said it was too it was too much like European dance music. Take it to the dance radio stations. Um, some, some people said, you know what? We don't like the LGBT thing that she's doing. We, we, we want to we stay away from that. And, um, and sure enough, we, 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 we were met with, the, with a big brick wall in front of us. But at that time, what was interesting, it was a, a few digital platforms that were on the rise. So everything I learned uh, regarding breaking new artists with, with Eve and developing new talent with Eve, I, ended, I had to unlearn it. Because what I learned then wasn't going to work now. It just was a new day and age. And, um, but it was a few platforms rising. Um, a company called Facebook was just coming out of .edu. They were only on college campuses. And all of a sudden, they were opening up this platform. It was coming out of .edu. Um, it was a new platform called Twitter 
that was developing, where now all of a sudden you can reach a, a massive amount of global audiences a, a, around the world. It was a new video platform. Back in my day when I was working on Eve, you had to go to MTV or BET to get a music video played, and all of a sudden it's this digital platform called YouTube that was on the rise, that where you could upload your own videos. Um, so now there were no gatekeepers in the way. So, uh, so we were kind of forced into uh, uh, to open up our brain to, this, to, to, this, uh, to these new digital platforms. So where in our space, coming from Tower Records and Best Buy and places that were uh, selling physical CDs, all of a sudden the music industry was getting wiped out. It was a company called Napster that it completely wiped out the music industry because the music industry tried to fight against, uh, fight against those headwinds. They tr and and, and they, they were never gonna win this war because all, what we were doing that was terrible in the music industry, we, would, uh, we, 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 we treated the customers bad. You would, you would put two good songs on a CD with 13 songs and make people buy the entire thing. And then you made the pack. And remember the old package and it was so hard to even open? Like you, you had to get a blowtorch to even get the CD out of the thing. And then the music was bad half the time. So, so it was no wonder that people were, were taking the music. So instead of em embracing the technology and listening to the customers and learning from the customers, uh, the music industry went the opposite way. Uh, but what we did with, with Lady Gaga, we were able to listen to not only listen to the customers, we had a direct communication with the customers. So all of a sudden, it, it, it was a democracy. We, there were no, we didn't need the radio stations to get to the fans. So the fans started building their own communities and it became a global thing. And that was the difference. With Eve, we used to have to, we, we used to be able to control the market. So we, 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 we used to say, you know what? Let's break her in Philadelphia first. Then we're going to drive up the turn, Turnpike and break her in New York. Then we'll take it up to Boston. And then once we got the East Coast, then we'll take it to the Midwest. Then we'll take the West Coast. Didn't work like that anymore. Once you put it up on YouTube, went around the world. Once you sent out that tweet, it went around the world. Facebook was going around the world. And the way we got it played on, on, on radio, um, it was thanks to my good friends in Canada. <laughs> so it was one station that decided uh, that they were gonna play the record in Toronto. And it became a hit in Toronto. And because of the internet, the requests started coming because they were early. The kids already knew, the radio stations were late, but they started playing it in Toronto. And then I went to a station in Buffalo and said, hey, we're huge in Canada. <laughs> One station, right? <laughs> but we're huge in Canada. And then Buffalo started playing a record and then it kind of spread out, spread out from there. And that was Gaga and I after we had, um, that was after the, I think the last inauguration. But it was uh, a, an incredible journey that she and I set out on that it ended up becoming uh, you know, this seed that we started with 50 fans in a nightclub to fast forward, you know, two years later, you know, becoming one of the, one of the, biggest, one of the biggest stars in the world.